So training camps open in just a few days, which means we are finally close to wrapping up one of the wildest off seasons in league history. But not before we squeeze in just one more little mini drama because this is the NBA and of course we will. This one is about Andre Iguodala and how he got here involves some dominoes, starting back when Kevin Durant decided to leave the Warriors for the Nets in July. Golden State didn't want to lose him for nothing, so they pitched the Nets on a sign and trade for D'Angelo Russell, but to execute it, they not only had to incentivize it with a first round draft pick to Brooklyn, they had to clear salary space, which ended up coming in the form of Andre Iguodala who they traded to Memphis with yet another first round pick. It will not shock you that Iguodala, a three time NBA champion and former finals MVP, was not interested in playing for a rebuilding Grizzlies team. There is immediately talk of a buyout and if Iggy had been willing to take a decent haircut off his $17 million salary, Memphis probably would have done it because hey, they already got a pick out of the deal. But Iguodala has made it clear he's not interested in losing money. He's also made it clear exactly what he thinks of the Grizzlies. In an interview with NBC Sports' Monty Poole, Iggy told this story of being traded. Here's the quote. So I'm texting my wife, telling her I'll probably get traded, you know, to clear up cap space. She asked me where I thought I would go. I said, I don't know, I'll probably end up in Memphis or some bleep like that. She says, for real? I'm like, I don't know, maybe, probably not. Then the next day, I got the message. It was Memphis. I fell out of my chair laughing at that. Well, in case you were wondering, the story of Iguodala falling out laughing did not go over great in Memphis. The city's lead sports newspaper columnist, Jeff Calkins, suggested that the Grizzlies send Iggy their own text, which he felt should say, you can sit on the sidelines and rot for all we care <laughs> until some team trades for you. Well then, um, I'm not sure that's exactly how the team's front office phrased it, but indeed they have made it clear they would in fact rather wait for someone to want to trade for Iguodala, even if it cost them a roster spot in the meantime. Then yesterday, Woj confirmed that the two sides have agreed that Iggy doesn't need to show up for training camp, which is probably for the best considering the whole rotting business and all of that. So anyway, what is going to happen from here? Iguodala is hardly the only one waiting to see how this market shakes out. We've got Chris Paul starting the season in Oklahoma City. He'd sure like to finish it somewhere else. Bradley Beal says he wants to stay in Washington. And the Wizards are saying he's untouchable, but we'll see if that really lasts until February. Really, there's a whole bunch of lingering drama from this summer that's going to spill over into the season, which, I mean, it's the NBA. We wouldn't have it any other way. So, Woj, break down the Iguodala situation for us. What teams can make a move for Iguodala at this point, and how aggressive do you think they're going to be? Well, probably no one before December 15th when players who signed free agent deals this summer can be included in trades. You know, 40% of the league was a free agent last summer, so it allows you uh, to be able to match up a deal. He makes $17 million, so that's mm -hmm. a lot to match up for a team. Um, you know, teams like the Clippers and the Lakers are hoping he'd get a buyout, and then they'd compete, try to sign him uh, as a free agent. But there are going to be plenty of teams interested in him. And I think right now for Iguodala, the idea of missing a training camp, seeing how the season starts, seeing what teams might make more sense for him. What if there's an injury with the right. Lakers or the Clippers where all of a sudden you go, maybe that's not the team for me. And 35 years old, you know, he's, I think he's fine with allowing the season to play out. If you're, if you're trading or signing Andre Iguodala or trying to get him, mm -hmm. you're doing it for the postseason. You're a championship contender. And so I think for all those reasons, this is going to play out over time. And if Memphis doesn't get a trade for him by February 6th, February 7th or 8th, they'll do a buyout. He'll be a free agent. But Memphis is pretty committed right now, very committed, that the, and, and, and they believe they can find a trade for him eventually by aggregating some other contracts, maybe getting another pick out of this. Mm -hmm. And so this stalemate, I think, is going to go on well into the season. Yeah, they could get in a double pick situation for this, which would be great. Do you think that he's going to not just sit out trading camp, but when you say this should probably go on until at least December 15th, we just won't see him anywhere until December 15th? He'll just be at home playing golf? No, well, you know, he'll work out. He'll stay in shape. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, the wear and tear on your body at that age, he has been on this Warriors run. He has played deep into June for you know multiple seasons and if there's a player who you know it makes sense for him to not have to go through that grind here early in the year and have fresh legs for a team later in the year you know this isn't a young player who's been put on the shelf here so I think it works out fine for Iguodala and he gets a chance to survey the scene what uh, the marketplace looks like like um, and, and where as he might closer. best fit in as we get closer to uh, whether it's the trade deadline or um, you know, when he can get a buyout in February.
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.